Hi there, my name's Doug Milburn. I'm uh, co-founder, chairman, and vice president of Protocase Incorporated. So I'm here to talk today to talk to you about price increase. And uh, we've announced the price increase, and in reality, there is a price increase, but it's more you're gonna see, feel changes in our pricing. So I want to explain that. And before I explain it, I'm gonna put a boredom warning on this. Okay, um, if you're not interested in pricing and how we do things, uh, please feel free not to watch the video and I won't be hurt even if I found out it was, I wouldn't be hurt. But uh, if you are interested, just transparency on how we do our pricing, uh, I'm gonna try to make this about sort of five to seven minutes and uh, a little bit of luck, it won't be too painfully boring. So Protocase, and we've told the story before, uh, number of other places, but my founder, Steve Lilly and I, or both, uh, well, you know, I was, I was in grad school forever and started an innovation company out of grad school. Uh, my co-founder was an engineer. He worked for a, a marine navigation electronics company, and uh, and we both had the problem, uh, you know, doing innovation and manufacturing stuff in small volume and and trying to get parts, trying to get electronic enclosures, trying to get sheet metal parts, trying to get machine parts. Uh, the supply chain out there is. Uh, largely small shops for us is what it was, small local shops. Great, loved the people, loved working with them, but guess what? When they got busy and one of the big players in town shows up, gives them a big order, we bump to the back of the line. And I don't know how many times I've had to go you know, beg people and sweet talk them to try to get an order out in a reasonable time because we have a project that's critical to us. And uh, you know, and I've been explained by the shop, they, yeah, we got this and they're a really important customer. So we said, Protocase all about changing that. Uh, we are here for scientists, engineers, innovators, and people who basically have creative thoughts that turn into electronics, turn into machinery, turn into spacecraft, aircraft, whatever else. We're there infrastructure to turn your thoughts and creativity into the parts you need. The first part of doing that is to get your price. Okay. And uh, we built a process over the years since 20, 2003 when we started. We built a process and we built, we actually built a whole software infrastructure, a really unique software infrastructure inside here around mass customizing uh, electronic enclosures, parts, etc. So in, the, in that first step of, of trying to get you a price for a job, first thing is to calculate a cost. Okay. To calculate a cost, we do it the way basically anybody else in custom manufacturing would do it break things down into parts and we figure out what steps we have to take to make those parts and in particular how much time it's going to take on each individual station. We got a bill of materials and we got a set of times. The model we've used for the last 18 years has been a uh, flat hourly rate approach. Basically we look at the total amount of time that we uh, of labor hours that are spent in the plant doing your jobs and we look at the total amount of cost, labor, consumables, overhead, everything else, and we divide it out. If your job spends an hour on the laser, uh, it would be costed, that hour would be costed at that uh, hourly rate. If it spent an hour on a drill press, and the laser is a million dollar capital cost item, uh, drill press might be a $5,000 capital cost item, uh, but we charge that out at the same hourly rate. Good news is it worked and it got your pricing, and it got your pricing quickly, and it got your pricing in a way that wasn't too overhead intensive, because really you don't wanna pay us for, the, for that kind of overhead, so you want us to be efficient. Uh, it managed to do all that. The downside of it is the costing that we give you is not, doesn't accurately reflect our internal costs. It's so obviously the examples I use, I, I use million dollar laser with the uh, very maintenance intensive, uh, you know, preventative maintenance intensive to keep it up and running. Uh, that's got station actually has a much higher cost than that drill press that I used as a, as a counter example. So what we're doing, one of the major things that's happening in this is we are changing from uh, flat hourly rate costing into station, what we call station-based costing. What's that mean to you? It means you'll get a, your, your job quote will be, uh, will be built off a cost-based estimate that is much more accurate than we we're using before. And economically, you can go through the arguments why that, that's a good thing. It actually ends up being a good thing for everybody, for both you and for, for us. As a result of that, 
if you've been a long time customer, you have a whole mix of jobs. What you'll be seeing is you're going to be seeing some jobs will be going up in cost. The ones that are used things like laser, five axis milling, uh, some of our, uh, you know, very capital intensive, uh, uh, fully automated bending systems that we use. Uh, heavy use of those stations will drive costs up. Okay. Uh, likewise, you've got something that has a lot of manual work on it uh, at, at low capital cost equipment. Uh, you're going to feel your costs, uh, you might see your jobs going down in price. Okay, let me bring to the second thing that's going to happen um, inside this, what we call price increase. Um, and what we're doing is we are changing over from uh, having basically one lead time quoted to everybody which is based on our, our a two to three day uh, manufacturing time. And uh, we are going to keep that service, of course, which is why so many people come here. Okay. Um, and in addition to that, and that's gonna be called priority service. Okay. Um, in addition to that, we're introducing something called economy service. What's economy service? Economy service is uh, the same manufacturing job, but just based around a two to three week lead time. Let me put a little fine print around that too. And you say two to three day manufacturing time. A two to three day means is from the time for a job that's under a certain size threshold. It's two to three days from the time all the parts get here that are needed for your job. If they're in stock, it happens right away. But if we have non-stock items that there's a delay, it, we do it in two to three days. So, Basically, we have two to three days wiggle room on our manufacturing because the, the, all those other things are out of our control. Okay. Two to three weeks, well, it gives us a lot more wiggle room. Okay. And, and again, that's two to three weeks for jobs beneath the size threshold okay, from the time that we're able to start the job. Okay. So what's that mean? Okay. And why are we doing this? Well, doing everything with two to three days wiggle room has meant that our load in operations because you guys buy things when you need it. That's the whole reason we're here. That's what our business model is all about. So um, because you guys come asynchronously to each other, we get big peaks and valleys and we don't have that leeway to work things out. Most manufacturers keep backlog to, to move that out. We don't. We're fixed lead time manufacturing. So um, what will happen is with that economy stream as work comes into that, uh, that effectively will get done in the valleys. It'll let us drop the peak by giving up some of that work during peak times and we'll move it into off peak times. So by doing that as we grow, effectively it means we're doing manufacturing jobs in, on plant time that the overhead has already been paid for. So it gives us a cost savings. Second thing, and something that I think is really, really important, are people, particularly people in the plant, so our people in the plant, um, to serve you in this way, uh, you know, how do we vary? How do we do the peaks and valleys? Eh, they vary their hours. They'll get scheduled for eight hour shifts. And when they show up for an eight hour shift, they never really know if it's gonna be a six hour shift or if it's gonna be a 12 hour shift. Okay? And uh, they've done that willingly. We got a great culture in here that's all around connecting everybody into the, the value we add for you guys. We talk about your jobs. We share feedback from you guys with everybody in the plant. Everybody, you know, is, is done very, very willingly. But it's somewhat challenging on, their, on, on our, our people in the plant. So what we're doing with the economy is we are creating a system where we're going to be able to a much larger extent even out the hours for our people in the plant and also even, even out our operational engineering and our, and our not so much our sales hours, but our operational engineering people will we'll get a break out of this too. Um, yeah, so that's what it means to us. So what's it mean to you? What it means to you is you're going to see these two streams. Priority is going to have a premium associated with it, and that's the price increase. Okay, so we're going to crank that up by a reasonable amount, and uh, th it'll vary on the type of jobs and the complexity of the jobs and whatever else. And what about economy? Well, economy service on average is going to be about the same price as what we sell right now. So it's going to give you options. Uh, if you wish to get a cost savings, um, great economy is there if you have the flexibility and time. If you don't have flexibility and time, uh, use a priority service and you're going to get that same great service. And I really think that this is, you know, as the company grows, 
uh, we've actually gotten better and better at maintaining our, our quality of service and our consistency, and it's going to let us do this uh, way into the future. So, anyway, thanks for uh, being here with us and, uh, you know, allowing us. We are incredibly proud to serve you, the scientists and innovators and engineers that move our society forward. And uh, we live vicariously through you. We follow you guys. We love watching what you do. And thanks for uh, allowing us to serve you.